1888, I believe, was a chance by having our attention called to Galatians 3 especially, and from Galatians 3 then to Romans and the rest of the whole Bible, to see why God, who values nothing higher than our freedom, has made so much use of law. And the devil was concerned that at that general conference we might get the message. And Ellen White says, I love what I'm hearing. It is the beginning of the loud cry of the third angel's message to be attended with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. And uh, the devil knew he had to do something. And he didn't get all the delegates drunk. We're not likely to do that. He got them all exercised over some less important theological point. And how many a meeting has been wasted that way. But what is the most important thing? Is it not the truth about our God, the way He runs His universe, and what He wants of us? And since we've been so damaged, how can we be saved and healed? What do we have to do? And there's nothing legalistic about that, any more than I, when I go to the doctor and say, I'm sick, in pain, and I would like to be well, what do I have to do? And his first question is, well, do you trust me? Yes, I checked you out very, very carefully. <laughs> you know, now I do that before I go to a surgeon, wouldn't you? You want brain surgery? Would you just go to somebody down the street who puts a sign out on the best brain surgeon in Minneapolis? If you put that out, I'd know he wasn't probably. You'd investigate very carefully. God says, investigate me, please. And having investigated him, do you find him trustworthy? Trustworthy enough to listen and let him heal the damage done. Doctors don't kill their dying patients. And God doesn't kill his dying children. He just gives them up when there's nothing more he can do for them. And I believe that's why at Minneapolis, in our apparently a carelessness and the bad feelings that we let creep in, we allowed the adversary to distract us just enough onto what looked like a worthy subject. And now we're saying at Minneapolis, we reaffirmed righteousness by faith. And then we describe it in servant language. And I don't think that's righteousness by faith. Well, it is to a servant. It is to a child, maybe. But to Abraham, to Moses, to God's friends, they have a different way of describing righteousness by faith in which God looks so reasonable and so sensible and so trustworthy and so admirable. To understand God's use of law is, I believe, just as Ellen White describes, the light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory and if we could put it on the Guam radio, I wonder what two billion people, many of whom who've never really tasted freedom and individuality and respect before, how they would respond to it. But if we go on there with the third angel's message of fire and brimstone, and I believe we should give the third angel's message, but we can't explain it in friendly terms, we could do more harm than good. Now, we Adventists are known for our support for the law. We are the defenders of the Ten Commandments. In fact, we're complimented in, in articles, in religious journals and books, even in humor. When the last general conference was held in San Francisco, they announced in the local papers that the Seventh-day Adventists came to San Francisco with $10 and the Ten Commandments and they're going home now without having broken either. Because they thought we were such skinflints we wouldn't spend money on any of the entertainment in San Francisco. But you see the reputation we have, we keep the commandments. Look, the people who crucified Christ seem to keep the commandments. That's not enough. They didn't understand God's use of law. And in their misunderstanding, they became very cruel, very judgmental, very harsh. And that's what it can do to us. And because the delegates didn't understand it, they were very harsh with each other. That's what it does. It doesn't make nice people to be legalistic. But to understand God's use of law is to thank Him for the law. We needed it. We needed every law He gave. We may still need it. Some people still need she bears even to be reverent, and that's a shame on them. But if we need it, God has given it to us. But what God would love us to be able to say is thank you for using those emergency measures. But we recognize them for what they are. 
We would do things your way whether you ever asked us to again or not, because we agree with you. It's the best way to do things. And now we become his friends and obey him in the highest sense of freedom. I mean, you can see how the devil twisted things in 1888 to our great loss, 